Welcome to another landscape photography tutorial. Today it's about scouting and planning again. Every once in a while I find myself in a location that's so beautiful that in nearly every direction I look, it looks spectacular. But to photograph such a location can be a bit overwhelming, especially if I didn't plan in enough time to scout and explore. A couple of months ago I already did a video about the importance of scouting and I showed several examples where I explained how I scout and how I look for the concrete compositions which I will photograph when the light is right. This way I don't get too hectic when the sky begins to glow because I know exactly what to photograph. I also talked about how in some locations it might be beneficial to not only scout compositions in one direction but to make sure to find something to photograph in all directions because light changes throughout the evening and while you might want some side light during golden hour just before sunset you might want to have the sun directly in the frame. Today I want to show you some photos I took during a remarkable sunset at Whiskey Bay in Australia and I want to talk about how I planned those photos. I think it's a good example on how to get the most out of a location. So after doing my research I already knew this place had potential and so I planned in two evenings down at the beach. The first evening I did a lot of scouting. There were many rocks and tide pools and I played around with different compositions before settling for one that worked the best that evening with a clear sky. Mind that the photos I show here are all raw and were just cropped so don't worry, the final photos will look a little more polished, but for the sake of this video it's enough that I show the cropped raw files. So on the next evening I came back and the sky looked much more promising. In order to get the most out of it I needed some anticipation and planning. So I started setting up my camera pointing northward, where I expected some warm side light during golden hour. Here I made sure to set up my camera where I wouldn't leave any footprints and marks in the sand of the other compositions I wanted to photograph afterwards. I was just outside of the frame of the photos I wanted to take once the sun got a bit lower in the sky. So once I had the golden hour photo I walked in a huge arc along the water's edge, around some rocks and then to my second shooting position. This way I avoided any footprints in the photos I would take afterwards. But had I not scouted the day before, I might have walked right in front of my second photo spot and would have had lots of post-processing work ahead of me. With the light getting very intense, I'm not even sure I would have found this spot. So on photo spot 2 I really had to work. The tides had changed it a bit to the day before and it provided new potential. Normally I like to just stick with one composition and th shoot throughout sunset, but with the burning sky of that evening I just had to get the most out of it and so I went through some different compositions. Once the sun had set and I lost the light in the foreground, I then went straight on to the tidal pools and rocks I had circumvented in the beginning. Now I didn't have to care about leaving footprints because I was now just moving forward and took the photos while doing so. Here started to become a bit hectic because I hadn't scouted the compositions, only seen the rocks and knew that they had potential. So I have also one outlier here which has no interesting foreground whatsoever. For this photo I got too hectic but I then went right back to the initial plan and moved on to the tidal pools. As the light changed I went around the pools pointing my camera in the direction where the light looked best. Those rocks were the perfect foreground to do so because they didn't dictate a certain direction in which I had to photograph them. And again I moved in a way to not leave footprints in the compositions I wanted to photograph next. In the end I got quite a good selection of photos from just one sunset. So I hope this was interesting for you and you saw how much planning can go into a photo shoot. Had I just arrived the evening to scout I would have covered the whole area on footprints and it would have been a real hectic evening trying to find composition in whatever direction the light was best. But because I had already scouted the day before, I knew exactly where I had to walk to avoid footprints in my compositions. Sure, if there had been other people, I wouldn't have had a chance to influence where they walked, but I got lucky. Two evenings at such a beautiful beach without other people. It's really hard to believe in times where other places all around the world get overrun. And yeah, as a close, one final tip maybe, if you want to photograph a sandy coast like this one, 
check the tides and make sure to do so on a receding tide and then plan your shoot and your compositions in a way that you follow the receding water. This way you have to deal with much less footprints. Incoming tide might also help to wash away footprints in the sand, but it usually also slowly takes away your compositions. So that's it for now. Now have fun on your next seascape shoot and don't forget to also watch my video on photographing breaking waves. I'm sure you'll also get some inspiration there. Bye!